everybody in this video I'll be showing you how to take the content that you created for your movie file and put it onto an actual cartridge so the first thing you'll have to do and the saddest part of the process is reuse an old cartridge uh, I like to use the cartridges that are from the early Atari series namely the ones that the first combat cartridges came out on. Uh, so combat, asteroids, things like that. You'll notice that they have a little automatic dust cover and if you just push in and retract you see the cartridges exposed like that. So there are better videos out there on how to remove the label from an Atari cartridge but basically there's one of two ways. If you feel with your finger you'll see a little indentation in the middle where a screw hole is. So you can either take like a sharp edge or a scalpel and cut through there, which will expose the Phillips screw that you can then unscrew. Or you can take um, a heat gun or a hair dryer and apply heat to the label until it becomes more pliable and you can pull it right off. One warning though, if you do use a heat gun, you might end up warping the case. I've done that as well. So I think uh, we'll try with just a hair dryer because we know those don't get too hot. I'll be right back and we can try that. Okay, so I just have a hair dryer here. Let's try applying some heat and see what happens. Looks like the corner's already been lifted a bit, so that should help. Right, I'm not sure if that did anything, but let's give it a try. It's pretty dry. Oh, yep, that, it's coming right off. That's amazing. So if you're like me, you can save the label. I don't like to throw anything out because they're not making any new ones. So I'll just stick that on a shiny surface for now. You can see it came out in one piece. That's beautiful. And now we'll, oh, you can even see some of the lettering under there, it says asteroids. So we'll try the same thing for the uh, name. See if we get any luck with this one. Oh, again, that's coming right off one single piece. I love that. Okay, now this is the tricky part. Oh, first, we'll use a screwdriver. See if I have one handy. Yep. Yeah. And there's the Phillips screw. Just undo that. And we'll save that for later because we'll need that again. And now the tricky part is to pry this apart carefully. There's a couple of tabs, if I recall, around here and here. So I think you got to squeeze in the bottom part, the thin side. Helps if you have something like this, like a thin wedge. I fix it. I find these come in handy. I'm just going to play with this a minute, see if we can get it. Well, actually, the bottom side comes out, I believe.
a little bit of patience. Yeah, okay, that wasn't too bad. Should open right up. Okay, and here we go. So if we pull that out, you see here's the dust cover mechanism. There's two pieces. And here's the uh, ROM chip itself. It says 49049, I think. But we'll save that since it works fine. You may want to label it. And then this little spring clip, which you'll need. So now that we have that, oh, I always like to remember. So the circuit side goes down in this case. Yeah. Usually on the fat side of the, of the cartridge. So I went like that. We'll remember that. So this is the uh, movie card circuit board, version 2.3. There's version 2.3 and 2.4. They're very similar except for the, uh, the the chip housing that's used. And here's the uh, micro SD card you'll need. So in order to put your contents on this SD card, you'll need something like this, like a USB adapter. So you can just slide the card into your USB adapter. Plug it into your... PC and then copy the file onto the card. So make sure that there's nothing else on the card because the movie cart circuit will just look for the first file it finds and try to play that. So if you have other files on there, it may not work. And also for best performance, it's best to format your card beforehand. So that will make fast forwarding and rewinding a lot smoother if the USB isn't fragmented. So basically, you put it in there, stick this in your PC, and copy the file over. So once it's done, you can insert it into your card, and you can see it snaps in and out. So now this goes where the uh, movie cartridge, or where the uh, Atari ROM cartridge went. So one thing you may have to do, so you see it snaps right in there. Um, you may have to increase the size of this hole a little bit, depending on the uh, diameter of the post on your cart. So I think it just fits, so I didn't want to make it any bigger than necessary. But if it doesn't fit, you may have to just get a file or some sandpaper and increase that diameter a little bit. Um, and depending on what your goals are, you may have to cut out a little slot right here where the SD card sits. So you can just put a piece of masking tape there and measure it out and cut it out. Personally, when I make a movie cart, I like it. Um, I like to make it dedicated for one specific movie, so that it doesn't dispel the magic with an SD card in modern 21st century technology. So once that's in, the next tricky part is putting these pieces back in. And it takes a little bit of practice, but what you have to do is basically slide this piece and this piece back in here so that the little clips catch the edges here. I don't know if you can see that very well. So you'll see those slides back and forth. But sadly, you got to get this piece in here at the same time. So if you play around with it enough, and sometimes they go right in, sometimes it takes me several minutes of frustration to get it in. But you should be able to get it back in. And sometimes it's easier to, if you hold this piece open, just one sec. Sorry, I'm back. Just a little cat emergency, but she's okay. So, um, actually, before we stick this in, I should mention that these covers are very sticky. 
So what I like to use to remove them, stuff like uh, Goo Gone and isopropyl alcohol. I just put in a little sprayer here. Mine is 99%, but I think uh, less should work too. One warning, do not use acetone. I learned that the hard way. Acetone just melts stuff. It melts plastic, so don't use that. Goo Gone is nice and isopropyl alcohol and I just use like an old toothbrush and just spend a lot of time rubbing it all off so that being said let's see if I can uh, stick this thing in here or not so if I do this and then I lower the dust cover and I stick this in here Oh, we might be in luck. So this part works. It's retracting. And then I just have to make sure to line this part up. And looks like it works. So let's see if the post uh, will fit in that hole now. Ta-da! Looks like we got the card in there. So I just like to lower this and make sure the dust cover is retracting. And it looks good. So we'll want to put the screw back in there. And then we'll want to put our labels after we clean it up. So I have another video on how to make uh, your own labels. And where to get them done but in this case it's Westworld so I have these white vinyl stickers made up I'll be peeling those off and uh, putting them on there but first I just want to clean this cover so you may want to do this first so you don't get much liquid on the circuit board but but I think it shouldn't be too bad and isopropyl alcohol should evaporate anyways pretty quickly So it seems to be coming off. You can I can feel with my finger it's not as sticky as when I first started. I might try some Gooby Gone next. We love this stuff at home. I've had the same bottle for years, but it's great. Yeah, you can see the uh, the gunk just collecting. Yeah, it's not sticky at all anymore. Wonderful. Make sure to get all the corners. And look at this, perfect. Looks brand new. Um. Um, sort of of different minds when it comes off when it comes to taking off these labels. This label I'm going to remove because it says uh, Asteroids Atari 2600 pre-owned Atari 2600 game. I got it for $4.99, so it's a modern sticker. So I'm just going to remove that because it doesn't have the nostalgic value to it. But if it's at something like Kmart or or Walmart or Zares or Sellers or whatever store you're familiar with growing up, it definitely would have stayed. Okay, that looks pretty good. Let's try that out. So you may want to use some IPA to get off the Gooby Gone. Okay, and I like to let it just naturally evaporate for a moment or two. Just 
Just make sure there's no residue left under the sticker. One thing that may be useful is to get a real cartridge just to make sure you're not putting the stickers on backwards, which isn't fun. So let me just grab a real cartridge. Be right back. Here's one. Uh, there's a there's a funny story about these. These are uh, cheap knockoffs that were sold in a Canadian discount store of real Atari cartridges with, with just uh, made up artwork and made up titles. So I have a few of those, but we'll just use them as reference. So, if we line them up, then we know exactly how the label should go. So you'll want to do this carefully. So, let me just try this. Get these off if I can. Not the easiest. There we go. Okay. okay, I don't think that's horrible. That will do. Now for the main sticker. This time it goes right side up. Take out the spaces. Okay. Make sure there's nothing underneath, otherwise you'll feel little bumps, but I think that's pretty good. Um, I can always reline that up later if I don't like it. So next video, we'll see how it actually, uh, how it actually works. All right. Thanks for watching, everybody. See you in the next video.